See this verse? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So when you hear the word of God, so faith comes by hearing. Make sense? Now remember, we're going to die, right? And that ain't the end. And it is appointed unto men once to die. But after this, the judgment. That's where he tells you it. Well, if you were to be judged according to your life and his law, would you be innocent or guilty? Guilty. Like the rest of us. And here's a snapshot of that court date coming up that you have. Right? He's, one of, he's already telling you what it's going to look like. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the heaven and earth fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books, according to their works. So if God was to judge you by your works, how would you do? Guilty. So this judgment isn't to determine whether you get to heaven or hell. This is to determine how much punishment you get because you're going to hell. Make sense? By the way, there's good news and you don't have to, and that's why we're here to tell you. But you first have to understand the problem. Make sense? And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, dead for a man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Make sense? Read that one more time. Let me just get down here. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So God's going to judge you by your works. You'd be found guilty. Be cast into the lake of fire. According to the scriptures. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Okay, well, thank you for that because I want to help you understand. So what doesn't make sense about it to you? Think of it like a... This where he's saying that he uh, this judgment, right? Uh-huh. You're saying that this is the one that tells us if we're going to heaven and say, you know, right? okay. well, That has to be decided before you die. Okay. Because when you, the night you die, the decision making is over. So and he's you, already made his decision on if I'm guilty or not. No, he's given you an opportunity to accept the solution or to uh-huh. reject it. So let me give you the solution. You ready? Yeah. The good news. Yeah, because he just threw out the bad news. So this is the bad news. This is the bad news? I've just explained to you the bad yeah. news. That you're, see, you've sinned like the rest of us. Uh-huh. There's a judgment to come, and you'd be found guilty and cast into the lake of fire. That makes sense. I'm glad you broke it down because I was Makes sense? That. Yeah, it does. Now, I believe that place exists, and I don't want you to go there. That's why we're here to tell you how to avoid it. So here's, according to the scriptures, how you can avoid hell. We'll start over, but this time with the good news. Okay? For I'm not ashamed of the good news of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation that's to be saved from hell. To everyone that believes. So when you believe the good news, God saves you from punishment to come. Does that make sense? Now get this. Being justified freely, God's willing to clear your record freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So because what Jesus did for you, which I'll explain in a minute, God can legally let you go free by His grace. You get that? Whom God accepts for it to be a payment through faith in His blood. Right? Did it say through your good works, through your baptism? No. Put your faith in his blood and God will set you free and give you forgiveness and eternal life. I'll explain it more. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just. All sins have to be paid for, right? And the justifier, he paid them, of him which believe in Jesus. Make sense? A man goes to hell to pay for his own sins. 
for a man that's going to heaven is one who cross pays for his sins too. Makes sense? It does. Right. So where is boasting then? Or bragging? It's excluded. That means you can't brag about going to heaven because you didn't do anything. By what law? Of works? Nay. No. But by the law of faith. If you put your faith in his blood, how could, how could you brag about that? You didn't do it, he did. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. So it's not by being good that you get into heaven. We're bad. Because we're bad, Christ died to pay for your sins and shed his blood to pay for them. Put your faith in that blood and God says, well done, it's a gift. Do you understand that? Okay. Yeah, that we're not doing it. He's a, he did the, he finished the work. Yeah. All you have to do is be willing to accept the payment. It's a gift. From yeah. God to you, so. Now to him that worketh, that's trying to do anything to get to heaven, religion, being a good person, etc. That's the reward not reckoned of grace, but of death. So if you're trying to be religious to get to heaven, you're in debt. Because you've got to make a hundred. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. See that? So don't try to be good and, and this, that, and other to be good. So we should be, but that ain't how it works. So be guilty in your heart and trust what he did for you. And that's a gift. You so I should pretty much accept what I've done. I, I agree with God that what you've done is sin. Yes, and agree with him that if I was to die according to this book, I'd end up in hell. Yeah. Accept that fact. Yeah, I've already accepted that. All right. Now, uh, good. Now, because... if you've accepted that fact, look to the good news and accept the payment that he made so you don't have to go there. Do you understand that? Okay. All right. Well, I'm not done. I'm not done. So I hope it clears it up for you. Check this out. Remember the wages of sin is death, then the judgment? But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He says you can live forever in heaven because it's God's gift to you. Do you do anything to earn a gift or buy it? A gift is something somebody gives you. What do you do when somebody offers you something? And forgiveness and eternal life is something that's free to you because of what he did on the cross. If you just take it. You got that? All right. Now remember. We're well, good. Now remember the good news. He says, I'll save you when you believe the good news. Well, he spells it out for you right here. Try to get a handle on it. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. That's good news. Which I preached unto you, which also you have received. Right? You have to receive a gift, don't you? And where you stand, by which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believe in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, was buried, and he rose again from the dead on the third day, according to the scriptures. Now what'd he do? He, he died for our sins. Whose sins? Our sins. Whose? Our sins. Whose? It has to be that person. Mine. Yours. He did it for you. All right, now he tells you to receive that gift. Now here's how you receive the gift. Ready? You follow me? But what saith it? The word is near you. Now I believe. Even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. He said you're saved by faith in the blood, right? He says that faith is in your heart and in your mouth. But if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, you got that? See, earlier you confessed your baptism. No, we're guilty. And no word can save you. And because we're guilty, he died for me. See the difference? Depends on what you're trusting in, right? But if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Is that complicated? Do you understand that? But if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. What is that God raised him for us? 
He rose up from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he's sitting there at the right hand of the Father, saying, "Whosoever will come to me, I'll freely forgive him, because I have paid the sin. If they'll accept the payment." Does that make sense? For with the heart men believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed. For there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. I get this. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Does that make sense? So let me break this thing down. Uh, we're break it down. You believe you've sinned against God? Yes. You believe there's a judgment to come and you're on the losing end. He loves you enough, though, to provide a way of escape should you choose to take it. He offered his son Jesus to die in your place to take your punishment. And that bloodshed is the acceptable payment. And he'll take that. Make sense? He was buried according to the scriptures and rose again from the dead. You believe he did that to you? Now, are you willing to receive it by faith? The best way you know how. Yes. So my yeah. prayer don't save That's you. That's what I need. That's what I need to do. I need a prayer. Right here. If you'll believe in your heart and God raised him, he died for your sins, he's buried, and God raised him from the dead. If you believe that he did it for you, trust that. It's finished. And he says, all who call upon his name shall be saved. Wouldn't you call him and say, thanks for dying for me this evening? That's faith. Right? Why would you call upon one whom you don't believe? You wouldn't. But if you believe that in your heart, wouldn't you naturally call on him to receive his forgiveness and eternal life? And you ask me, well, how do I believe that? Through faith. That's how I got it. Make sense? Now, understand this. My prayer does not save you. Preacher's prayer is not saved, and your prayer don't save if you don't believe. But if you do believe, it, if I was to pray out loud for you, in the silence of your heart, would you come to the Lord by faith? And you may say something like this: "I've sinned, and I'm sorry, and I don't want to go to hell for it. But thanks for dying for me on the cross, and I'm trusting your blood to get me in, and nothing that I do. And I need to save you. You think you don't know that? That's faith." Now, are you prepared to receive Christ even today? Let me pray out loud for you, but this is between you and the Lord, okay? You, you have to talk to him. Make sense? Okay. Father, we bow our hearts before you. I'm grateful for an opportunity to be a witness for you and have peace, that your spirit can go out and convict this fellow's heart of sin. Let him see it. We've all got it. We're born into it. And if we're to die in that condition, justice must be done. But according to your word, you love us enough to die for us to pay our penalty. He died on the cross to shed innocent blood to cleanse us of our sin. He was buried. He rose again from the dead according to your word, and he's alive to our heaven. And by faith, all who will call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as a sinner need of a Savior shall be saved. It's a free gift from you to us, whosoever will take it. It's in Jesus' name we lift our voice from Father. Amen. Did the Lord speak to your heart today? Where are you going to go when you die one of these days? And I hope it's after you turn 100. <laughs> Not tomorrow. 